Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and welcome to the House of Dogs. to meet Emma Billington, a vegan animal activist and rescuer who has decided to open the UK's first free-running dog shelter called Dogs for Rescue. This means that all of the dogs are running free as a large pack in acres of enclosed land, the first of its kind in the UK. Emma has been running a successful doggy daycare centre for years in Manchester, but has always wanted to help less fortunate dogs from abroad. And this year has decided to bite the bullet and get the project off the ground. I have been told that so far there are around 40 dogs living in and around Emma's house and grounds and that nurture and a home environment is paramount to the dog's socialisation and recovery before homing. But first we are off to pick up some very special dogs that I rescued from a Romanian kill shelter through Angels for the Innocent last month. A couple of the dogs we are meeting may have been abused or beaten and will need time and patience before homing but I knew immediately that Emma was the right person for the job. The dogs arrive with Ellie Pet, a reliable pet transport company who I have used for years from Romania. Run by Claudia Dimitru, the vans are large airy clean and the company prize themselves for their onboard nannies who are always there to help the dogs throughout the two-day journey from Romania to the UK. They come from all these bad places you know and and they need to have this transition as smooth as possible and it's also a new experience for them so you don't know if any of them has ever been in a leash or in a kennel or in a car before. We say goodbye to the Ellie Transport and head on back to Dogs for Rescue Sanctuary in Manchester. Dogs for Rescue not only rescue and rehome dogs, they also rescue farm animals and lots of other unwanted pets. As vegan rescuers, Emma and her partner Louise want to make it clear that all animals' lives are equal and it's not just another dog rescue where the rescuers hypocritically eat meat at the end of the day. There are so many dogs here. I mean, it's a dog's paradise. It's amazing. You've got all this space. What is the backstory to all this? What made you want to take in dogs from all over the world and, and rehabilitate them and, and rehome them? It started with one dog um, that was chained up at a neighbor's house that had no life at all. I started looking after her. Um, and then obviously you get to learn a bit more about dog rescue and things like that and how many dogs are out there that are desperately needing help and they're all chained or in kennels or whatever and I thought that there's got to be a different way of doing this. 
I ended up going to Turkey actually on holiday and I saw a dog rescue there where all the dogs lived together. And I looked at it all and I thought, well, this is great. Those dogs didn't know that they were in a rescue. They were yeah. just living their lives. And I thought, why don't we do that in the UK? You've got a lot of dogs, international dogs here. You've got Romanian dogs, you've got Bulgarian dogs, dogs from Cyprus. <laughs> when they're in the wild, in the wild, as you might say, running around as packs, this is a natural environment for them. They have the outdoor space, don't they? Like being back in the country. Um, and they gradually warm to you over a period of time and you're leaving the doors open, they're coming into your house, aren't they? A little bit at a time. So you're introducing them to a home environment. Yep. But some of these dogs have either been in shelters mm -hmm. their whole life mm -hmm. or they've been on the streets, haven't yep. they? So you're, you're giving them that halfway house. You have to see how they cope. Some of them cope really well and others need more time and the other dogs help them as well and this situation helps them and then we can assess them properly and we can put them into fosters to give us a bit more information because what we don't want is people having bad experiences and it putting them off so straight from a big kill shelter in Romania to go straight into a home with a family mm. and having to walk on a lead I mean it's so alien to yeah. them I've never had anything around their neck other than maybe yes. um, a catch pole we need somebody in between there that can bring the dogs from mm. there ready to be a pet so we get them used to wearing collars walking on a lead traffic all those kind of things test them with everything and then can match them suitably with a suitable family and then everybody's happy hopefully yeah. dogs pick people as much as people pick dogs don't they I always say to people don't have a set dog in mind just think about who is your kind of your dog your energy level we don't force them to choose and then say right this is the right one for you they have to then assess them in their home and we have to keep communication levels going and if it's not right it's fine they come back here but the good thing is if they come back here yeah. nobody's upset really because the dogs are happy this has been their home sometimes when you walk around dog homes in the UK you find that a lot of the dogs guard their kennels don't they they yeah. they throw themselves at the front of the kennels and they bark a lot and that puts people off yeah none of the dogs are barking are they exactly people they think it's really crazy. relaxed aren't they in this environment yeah a lot of these dogs have been locked up in mm -hmm. these kill shelters with bars across the front mm -hmm. and if they come over here and then they go into a shelter with bars across the front mm -hmm. their stress levels are going to be huge aren't they yeah but by you just allowing them to be free you've just taken the energy level down so whereas other kennels might be right for uk dogs mm -hmm. i think for international dogs this is spot on they're actually rehabilitating our poundies yeah. from the uk so they're giving back without realizing yes. it loads of these are helping our staff learn how to integrate because they're so unreactive they don't yeah. want to have any disagreements they're much more social and um, they might not trust people as much whereas the uk dogs tend to really yeah. gravitate towards people so they help each other they're all free and happy and then in the evenings when they come in they just chill on the sofas because they've been running all day yes. occasionally you must get animals that are well not homeable what is the most sort of the biggest challenge that you've had with a dog that's come over here and you've and you've thought to yourself he, he or she's gonna have to just stay with me for the rest of their life it'd be sherry she's paralyzed um a big um collie type who'd been shot she's doubly incontinent she couldn't use her back legs at all so we ended up having her legs and her tail removed to make her life better wow. because she she dragged her legs and sores would appear and we were constantly bandaging and then she needed oh. antibiotics and it just wasn't uh, sustainable for yes. her body we got her new wheels designed with some stabilizers on and now i mean she is the most yeah. beautiful dog and she can live here forever we've got this dog here rosie mm. now she's amazing she's come on hasn't she leaps and bounds she was kept in a lady's room not being touched for what was it over a year yes. apparently yeah because the woman didn't feel that she could touch her yeah she rosie was, was so afraid but again you, people just have no experience of these really frightened dogs um and we didn't in the beginning but it's a massive learning process so the lady asked for help um, and we obviously have the environment where Rosie could blossom and you know in a couple of days we're able to stroke her. You have farmyard animals that you rescue too don't you? What, what animals do you have here? We have chickens, turkeys, goats, sheep, pigs, horses, ferrets, rats, rabbits, <laughs> cats, um, I think that's it um, but I'm not ruling out anything else arriving. Um, 
we just help who needs it if we can and that's the thing yeah. and they've got a safe sanctuary here for life they're they're just yeah. here to chill out they'll never worry about having to go and be killed and be eaten yeah so tell us about your um your vision for the future because i know it's really exciting which is which is why I wanted to talk to you guys so much, is that you, you want to um, extend this mm. into a beautiful brand new sanctuary, don't you? And you want to build yes. a, a big one, literally just down the road. Yes. How do you envisage that? What's that going to be like? Well, um, obviously at first it was a kind of, will this work? Four years down the line we know it's worked and we've got high demand for the dogs so we know we can help a lot more. What we want to do is show that these are ready to go family pets yeah. with full yeah. Connor with full backup, full assessment. We want to save as many as we can. Will you move the farm animals down there too or will the farm animals stay here? The farm animals will probably stay here but go up for visits um, or we could, I mean there's so much land there we could sort of have a little area. Yeah. I think one of the biggest problems is, isn't it, is the lack of connects. You have a baby lamb in your kitchen who is just as affectionate as a little dog. If all the children were to hold her and bottle feed her, it would give them a connection and, you know, you've got a friendly pig that comes in and sits by the fireplace and um, got to say your goats are friendly and your hens are friendly and yeah. your turkey's friendly. Our pig can sit, walk on a lead, she's just the same. The lamb follows and is so loyal, just the same as a dog. So this is the place that um, we're currently in the process of buying. Um, it's pretty much ready to go. We just need to do a little bit of decoration and get some heating in there. Yeah. Um, and then it, the big transformation is the adventure playground that we're Fantastic. doing for them. Fantastic. And then you'll have all the land out the back there, will you, down there? Four acres, Four yeah. acres, That'd It's going to be, be amazing. Mainly it's going to be meet and greet areas in the day. So loads of families can come and spend some time either with a few dogs or with just one dog if they're really interested in that dog and all that kind of thing. Um, some refreshment areas. So most of the day they'll be out playing and things and coming in to meet people. And then at night time all the people will be gone. So all the rooms are then available for them for their bedroom. Obviously somebody's on site 24 hours a day, so they're never left or anything. Mm. If you want to find out more about what Emma and Lou are doing, what is your website? It's dogs4rescue.co.uk. And if you go on there, you can, you can see where they are. They're based just on the outside of Manchester. You can see what dogs that they have on their website. So we've got a dog here trying to eat the Connor! microphone. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed this episode of Animal Watch, please give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And tune in every week when we will be bringing you some fantastic, fantastic programmes on dog rescue, conservation, wolves, wolf dogs, and anything that's fantastic, to be quite honest. Bye for now. Sadly, since we made this episode, Emma's purchase of the unit and land up the road has fallen through. After two years of negotiation, fundraising and planning, the unit's owner sold the land to a garden furniture company without notice. Emma and her partner Louise are understandably devastated. However, they are not deterred and carry on seeking out new land in order to make their sanctuary a reality. Star, Bear and Valentina are making great progress. Valentina is on her way to a new foster and possible adoption. Star can now be touched and picked up. And Bear, who was the most traumatised of the group, now allows human contact. Emma, Louise and all of the staff at Dogs for Rescue really are amazing people and we hope that they find their new site really soon. <laughs>